Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 257 for Tuesday, May 26th, 2020. And welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire, still in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in San Jose, California, Paul Kent. How are you today, Mr. Kent? I'm pretty good. Did you uh, have a nice long weekend? We did. Was it any different than any other three days strung together? <laughs> it was. We, uh, we did, as a family, we did our first socially distanced outing. Uh, we went to uh, and did an escape room. Uh, we've been there before. We know the guy that runs it and uh, the way he has set things up felt very comfortable to us. So we went and did it. He's got, there's three different rooms in the place. It's escape hour in Guilford, New Hampshire, in case anybody cares or is local uh, he did. Uh, he has three escape rooms in the place, but at the moment, only one group is allowed in the place at all at any one time, he's working out a schedule where he can stagger people's entry and, and you know, uh, like when they arrive and when they leave so that he might be able to actually make some money and as opposed to this, but right now he's got, got it set up that way. You pick whatever room you want to do. You do it. He's got an hour booked between each appointment too. So that, yeah, yeah, just to clean, he had us wear gloves throughout the time in the room. We wore masks when we were interfacing with him, of course. Uh, And then, uh, and then gloves in the room, which was great. It, it was, it, I actually found wearing the gloves, especially in that environment, very, a very easy reminder not to like touch my face and do all that other stuff. So it felt, I felt pretty good about the whole thing. Yeah, it was, and it was fun. So, it was nice to get out. So there was that. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So did you solve the puzzle? We did. Yeah. We actually, we, ah. we solved it. We solved it pretty quickly. We, we, we as a family have, we, we found that we really like to do these escape rooms. It's a, you They're know, it's fun. a fun thing. We do them. Yeah. And it, we, we find as most people do, I don't think we're unique in this at all, but you know, everybody, any room we've ever done, everybody always contributes something very much material. Uh, you know, there's, there's puzzles that are more suited for like one type of thinking versus another. And right. it takes everybody, man. Like it's great. Yeah. So it's fun. It was fun. It was something to do. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little scary getting there. Not scary. It was a little disappointing getting there because we had to drive through like Alton Bay, New Hampshire, which is right at the tip of Lake Winnipesaukee. It was yeah. Memorial Day weekend, gorgeous day. And there were people out everywhere, no masks, yeah. no distancing. And it was like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think it's time for that yet. I, I don't know, but I do know what our governor tells us. And the governor says it's not time for that yet. So, you know. I just think that the, not to go down that, that sure. weird path, but yeah. you know, here's the deal is that for every argument I hear mm. about it's time, it's not time, whatever it is, the, the overriding premise for a lot of this stuff is about you not getting someone else sick, right? right. So right. all the people saying my personal liberty, I can do what I want and you know, it's time. And if it's going to happen, you all, everybody's got to go sometime. You can make those decisions for yourself. But the problem is, is that, you know, so much of this social distancing and wearing a mask is so if you are have it and you're not showing any symptoms, which is a thing, asymptomatic. Sure. Don't get somebody else sick. That's not cool. And right. so that's right. that's the part through all this. You know, I, I saw on the news large ocean towns all over the place, definitely yeah. in you know, Ocean City, Maryland, down in Alabama, you know, that that it was a lot of people and a lot of not masks. And even actually to kind of Transition, you know, I, I live close to Santa Cruz, California, which is yeah. really one of the one of the most liberal liberal places in the country. I mean, it is it very much it is so. It's it's yeah. hyper liberal. Yeah. There were two in incidences over the weekend that I heard about secondhand and then checked into firsthand, talked to some people. One, uh, a good band from over there went on a rooftop and did a gig. Ah. That, and then one was a was a parking lot gig. Um, the rooftop gig I saw pictures of and saw some video of that was posted and there were a lot of people there. A, they really enjoyed having some music to listen to. B, they were not socially distanced mm. and a lot of not of masks. And again, this is in a, this is in a, you know, in a, in a liberal state, a liberal town in a liberal state, you know, that I, I'm surprised at this. And, you know, there's this element of human nature that is just a real thing. I mean, it, this isn't like, you know, 
you know, a hardcore conservatism saying I'm not going to let a, a, a liberal governor tell me what to do. Yeah, no, this I, I like, it, it this started human nature. It started as a, a it, certainly there was a political do- divide that you could sort of, you know, zoom out 10,000 feet and see pretty easily. That's not the case in, in now. And I'm not convinced it ever was the case. I, I think it was it was a false presumption. Uh, I think you're right. It's human nature that and and I think we said this from the beginning. Now, I, I'm not entirely comfortable with our pacing of it, uh, but that we will figure out ways to get back together because being we are social creatures and we will eventually prioritize socializing over the, uh, you know, the, 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 the whatever the, the dangers that that socializing brings right because there are dangers that not socializing brings and and those are well covered too uh, but but we are social creatures and we will find ways of getting back to or getting forward to getting together and live music is you know a huge part of that uh, it i'm it's not going to be a clean path it's it's going to be it's not going to be a linear path either either right we're going to see things like this we're probably going to see it retract a little bit my, is my guess but i'm no epidemiologist what do i know uh mm. right you know but like i think we're going to see things sort of push and pull but the 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 general trend if you follow the trend line not necessarily the you know the minutia of it will be we are marching towards humans re-engaging with other humans that haven't, that they haven't been quarantined with. Right. It's going to get there. I, I, I feel like we're being a little impatient, but also that's not surprising. Yeah. Like I'm I w- impatient. I too. would agree with you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think like we got pushed into impatience in the yeah. name of commerce, you know, which is mm-hmm. questionable tech, but I, I will, the, the code of my conversation with my friend, his friends in Santa Cruz is the one parking lot um, show. Now, both of these, I don't know how naive the people who allowed them to happen were sure. as to what would happen as a, as a, as a result of it. Right. Um, I know the house rockers, I got a call over the weekend and uh, someone said, you know, I was at, at a friend's house. It was just the four of us and someone and their neighbor was playing outside and everybody just kind of went outside and just kind of let some music wash over them. And it was just so great with the house rockers be willing to do that in my neighborhood. And I had to say no for a number of reasons. Number one, um, my band is not all on the same page about readiness to kind of engage, yeah. you know, to yeah. risk anything. That That's one thing. Second thing is I don't know how to get a sound system for our band that size. You know, Bill can't do it by himself and I'm not going to ask him to try and do it by himself. And so just getting, you know, speakers set up and lifted and all that type of stuff is a, is a multi-person thing that cannot be done less than six feet apart. That's two. Number three, my band makes a lot of noise and we will attract a lot of people. Yeah. They're just, you know, people, if, if it's in a residential neighborhood, you'll hear us for several blocks and people will just, out of, if nothing less, out of curiosity. curiosity. Wander over. Yeah. What's and going it could on be there? more than safe, which is what I think happened with this one band that was on the rooftop. Now, the band that played in the parking lot, that was a band that was, um, I don't know if it was hired or, you know, enjoined by a local restaurant that was in the parking lot. Uh, there was a large outcry of on um, there's a like a neighborhood bulletin online bulletin board sure and and they did a mea culpa they said you know bad judgment you know we, we had good intentions but bad judgment we, we apologize to the community sure. and it was about 80 20 80 percent of people saying yeah not cool dude you know you're putting a lot of people at risk 20 percent of people saying my personal liberties i you know it's time for me you know time right yeah and so that's kind of where we are i know i know looking like our buddies over at cover band confidential They've asked the question, are you gigging yet? I think there's been a couple of uh, things raised on our boards as well. You know, there are some parts of the country where bands are slowly starting to get gigs well, again. Well, and, it's it's you know. happening here. Like like the Stone Church down the street from me is they have a, a they have two parking lots, one on either side of the church. And there's one parking lot where the band usually parks uh, that they've turned into outdoor dining because here in New Hampshire, outdoor dining is, yeah. is allowed with restrictions, six feet masks, this, you know, there's a whole, th- there's a whole thing you can read about it if you want. Uh, but they've created a, a great little dining area there and there's a stage. And so they are inviting currently, they are inviting solo acoustic acts to play on that stage because that way it's just one person you can do your thing and you know the sound is way easier and all of that stuff right um so so that's good to see and i'm actually thinking about like i'm still i'm personally 
we've been open for a week now uh, for restaurants outside. I'm uh, kind of going to let other people be the, the test the waters here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm waiting until we hit the two week mark. At least I want to see, are we doing this the right way? Are the cases going up? Like I'm in no rush. I'm my, but I'm, I'm extremely fortunate that a, I'm, you know, locked down here with my family. We all get along. We have plenty of space here. Mm -hmm. I'm still able to work. So I, I can lose myself in that on a regular basis. Of course, I'm coming up with other projects to do too, to take up the other time that I, I would be doing outside. Of so I, I don't, I don't say that judgmentally. I say that from a, a position of great privilege that I am choosing Choosing to wait, but you know, like with Bitter Pill, we've gotten quite a few offers for gigs. We've been doing our our album streaming parties. We finished we finished the album uh, this week, and actually, we're doing another one on Saturday again at four twenty Eastern. So tune in for that. But we've been talking about like, okay, how would a gig work? And the first question we have to ask ourselves is: Are are we the you know the band comfortable being together? And, and right. what is that, like you said, you know, with setting up gear, what does that mean? Can we do it in a way where we're not like face to face with each other? Cause even like our, our band, uh, Billy is our, I mean, he's formed the band. I would call him our leader. I don't know if he would take that title. He probably would. Uh, and, and then his daughter, Emily sings in the band as well. And they do not live together. You know, they're both adults. And they have not commingled yet. Like they're, they have not expanded their social bubbles to include one another yet. Emily works sure. in the healthcare industry. So she's being really careful and you know, everybody is, it's just how it is. So, so, you know, you've got people, Emily and her and Mike, uh, her boyfriend do live together. So the two of them are fine, but it's like, okay, you know, at what point are, are would we be comfortable, you know, sharing a stage with each other? And then, Okay, tell me how the rest of the, who else am I going to encounter, right? You know, yeah. because it, that's it's these are the these are the questions we need to answer. So let me add a couple levels to that. So yeah, yeah I've got a 10 piece band, right? So socially distancing 10 pieces, right? Uh, is weird, but also, and here's where a couple of the guys have, have been really emphatic is like singing and horns. That's not six feet, brother. That's oh, no. um, right. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to to a local bass player, Chip Brindemauer here, uh, who had the idea. He he. This was weeks ago. He texted me. He's like, I'm thinking the next gig that I play, I'm putting up one of those, you know, plexiglass horn shields on my microphone so mm -hmm. that I'm not projecting, you know, when I sing. I'm like, actually, that's a really good idea. It makes some the sound might be weird, but, you know, may, you might get some reflection that you like. Maybe it's a good monitor. <laughs> Well, the horns do, that, but the horns do it thing. anyway, like, right? Yeah. Simon is typically right in front of the the trumpets on the, as he says, yeah. the business end of the trumpets, and that is not a six foot, you know that right. that is you know putting it into a supercharger yeah. and sending it out into the world and singing as well. So Nick was you know really emphatic that remember these are these are these are things you know. Oh, and, absolutely. And so, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know. I feel the momentum of the universe some people are starting to do some stuff sure here you know like these these front porch concerts seem to be happening a little bit more often there's a couple restaurants that have stages that are letting people i don't know whether they're doing it for tips or whatever the deal is but you know guys are playing as people come in to pick up their to-go food you can't stay and loiter around right. you can go back out to your car you know for whatever that is um and you know there's there's different things going on, you know, that, and, and like I said, it feels like there's a momentum that starts to push things toward in the same way that the momentum caused by concerns for the economic vitality of the world, you know, pushed us to even talk about opening. Mm -hmm. Now it feels as though, well, you know, and, and with that comes all sorts of personal decisions Yep, that are are ra rational defend rationale defending things. I was thinking about when you were talking about you know you drive through these places and you know Santa Cruz as well, and it's human nature, not politics often. And and right. the thing is, nobody, regardless of your political persuasion, likes to be called out on anything, right? Like, well, you know, that, yeah, you it has point, nothing to do with politics when you when you call you, somebody you, out. You point yeah. out that someone's being irresponsible, yeah. and their first reaction is typically to get defensive and you know, defend their their decision making. Yeah, whether they actually mean what they're saying when they're def defending. Yeah, well, that it. that's <laughs> the you know, I I think I said this 
uh, I don't think I said it on this show, but I, I, oh, it came up during one of our, our bitter pill streams is we all need to be really like, I'm, and I'm, I say this about me, you know, so I'm working on being really careful not to get entrenched, right? We need the thing that's going to get us through this in a way that we can all still be friends at the end of it is, you know, logic and compassion and not necessarily in that order, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because we're all going to get things wrong. You, me, our, you know, local leaders, our country's leaders, the world's leaders, like everybody, no one's been through this before. So we're definitely going to get things wrong. And we reserve, we need to reserve the right to change our own minds. And we need to give other people the right to change theirs and evolve when new information comes to light, you know, whatever it is, like we need to be able to not come from a position of, well, last week I was in a fight about this and I said I was going to do this. And therefore, no matter what anything, what comes up or when anybody tells me, I'm never going to change my position. Like that kind of entrenchment is super dangerous right now. And we yeah. are all su subject to it. Like, I mean, if we're not really careful, A, about ourselves, but B, about how we treat others, it's like, we got to be really careful not to force ourselves or anybody else into that level of entrenchment because that's that's bad, I think. I think we just so need I'm, to. I'm going to resist the temptation to take us down the rabbit hole of of, uh, of political leanings. Thank I, you. I'm going to punt on the invitation you just gave me and and uh, and move us on slightly here. But it and really I, wasn't I think, political. Like, I, like everybody's going to get it wrong. And honestly, we need to root for every single person that's making a decision, which means, again, you, me, our local leaders, our national leaders, everybody, we need to root for 100% of us to come out of this on the right side, like, you know, come out of this successfully, which is, which is difficult. I, you know, I think super difficult. We need to root for, we need to root to come out of this successfully. I, yeah. I will definitely agree with you on your, on your, on your top level premise here. Yeah. And I will, I will respectfully, politely decline. Thank you. The ability. Yeah. So moving on to stuff that's good about music stuff. So let's talk about, uh, about gear. I mean, I'm yeah. doing a bunch of projects. You're doing a bunch of projects here. I'm definitely find myself making orders more and more. Yeah. Um, oh, my, you know, you, my quarantine credit card bill is going to be hefty. Exactly. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'm still waiting, hoping that those warm audio mics show up and I can give them a, a you know, it's been a while now. I kind of think they're in, in FedEx pur purgatory, but, um, yeah. But in the absence of that, I've got some cool stuff coming. I've got a Zoom H6 recorder. You do? Okay, cool. Yep. I know you mentioned that last week. That's great. That's great. Yep. Cool. No, no. Last week I talked about the L8 mixer. Oh, I think, so. that's right. Okay. All right, cool. But this is a, a little six-channel portable recorder. Yeah. And yeah. and so, I, I you know, I kind of am... Um, in addition to the streaming stuff, which, I, you know, I, I'm getting pretty good comments that my the quality of my stream, the sound quality of my streams is pretty good. So it's a kind of a cumbersome that I have to move my Bose sound system around you yeah. know, to get that. But um, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to start doing recordings um, and get really good audio yeah. and then separate audio. So the one problem of going through my, my Bose system is it's just, it's just mains out. It's, you know, everything right. is mixed together. Right, right. I'd like to be able to add, you know, some polish to the guitar sound and, mm. you know, and adjust reverb. So do some post-producing would be really cool. The one thing that I'm not really, uh, it's not my world and I want it to be my world is really understanding video. So, you know, as a musician, right, so let, audio, let's, audio. Let's, let's punt, not punt. Let's put that, let's, let's move that topic down the road a little bit. Let's stick with audio sure. gear for a second. All uh, right. and it, just, to, just to separate things and make our show a little bit more organized. But, um, yeah, so uh, you're right that, that there are things that we can do to make our audio setups better. And we've talked about a lot of those things. I, I, I am, I'm almost ready to kind of give my my feelings on this warm audio 251 mic in general positive, but I have some specific things to say. I want to do one more round of recordings with it before I really kind of deliver a, a review on it. But but so far, I'm not I'm not upset about the purchase uh, at all. In fact, I, it's it's a good thing to have uh, another. You know, I've talked about two different audio interfaces and and really what i'm talking about is not audio interfaces i mean control surfaces things that allow you to control your daw like they give you faders outside of your computer is essentially what it is mm -hmm. and i had the chance to check out you know the the price point of the ones that i've talked about is going down and down i, I had the the personas fader port 8 which is i think about an 1100 item uh and then uh, uh the 
Icon Platform M Plus, which is about a $420 item. Both of those have motorized faders uh, and some level of like transport controls where you by transport controls, I mean, play and pause and record and, and being able to kind of shuttle around. Well, the the next one drops the price again by by more than half down to 179 bucks. And it's the Korg Nano Control Studio. And it is either a USB or a Bluetooth controller. And it's got uh, it's got nine, uh, eight faders on it. Sorry. And they are not motorized. And I thought, oh, man, there's no way like, you know, I'm I, I need to have logic, which is the DAW that I've been using, it, but it doesn't matter. You know, they all sort of support these control surfaces. I need to have them synced. So if something changes in logic, the, the faders on the you know thing or where they are, especially when I bring a new yeah. project in, it brings them back to wherever that project's faders were. Well, I'm not like now that I've experienced something without motorized faders, it's not that important to me, depending on the project. If I'm using, you know, if I've got whatever, 25, 32, 40 tracks going, and I'm and I've only got eight in my bank of of, you know, visible like physical faders, then, yeah, I you know, the motorized faders are nice because as I'm jumping around in the project, it's nice to be able to just have things where they are. But the way these things work when the then the faders aren't motorized really isn't it, it's quite functional. So for like for the pod, podcast today, I'm only using a few channels, right? It's you and me, and and I, I actually have another channel there if we ever have a guest in the studio. Okay, great. But obviously, we're not using that today, uh, although we do have a guest coming up. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but he won't be here in the studio because, you know, obviously, social distancing. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, it, you know, and then I have our, our theme music and things like that. But it's certainly less than eight channels. And the way it works is when I load the session, it doesn't matter where the faders are on the on the control surface uh, and I can start moving the faders, but it doesn't affect the fader in the project until I go past it. So for example, if, let's say the fader is at 50% uh, in the project and I'm at 0% on the thing. If I start moving around, it's not going to jump things down to 10%. Only when I pass 50 going up, does it sort of catch it? It's almost, you know, it's like, it's like it's there and you got to catch it and then you can bring it up and down so you'll it, you don't ever wind up with this weird scenario where you you load the project you forget to grab the fader at the right point and now suddenly it's it's by surprise it's been moved somewhere else that never happens you have to actively move the fader past the point wherever it is and it's the same is true if all the faders are up on the on the device and you know everything is lower you got to come back down and and catch it and then it tracks and Having this thing, I mean, it, it, it can be powered with USB if you plug it into your computer. It's tiny. It's like the, half the size of a, a keyboard. And like I could, it's lightweight. I could throw this in my my travel bag, you know, when, when we're allowed to travel again. And when I'm podcasting on the road, I would definitely bring something like this with me. It's awesome. And again, for the home project studio, depending on how much you want to spend, 179 bucks, man. And you've got something that's better than grabbing the mouse because because you can grab three faders and move them simultaneously. Yeah, it, you know what I mean. It like it really adds a lot for not a lot of money. I it, I'm really impressed with it. This thing, it shocked me to be perfectly honest. That it was like, wait a minute, I don't hate using this. In fact, I quite like it. So I, I know that's probably not the review they want to hear. <laughs> but <laughs> but you, you know that's realistically that's I, I I was I was pleasantly surprised, uh, and I'm glad I got the chance to check it out. So yeah. So anyway, there that's that's the toy for this week. So uh. well, and there are so many of those. Literally, as I watch yeah. other people doing what they do, yeah, um, you know. So I started um, my toy so far. So my first big toy was a the Universal Audio Aerial. So I got Arrow. I got a you know a Thunderbolt interface that you know runs natively a lot of plugins. Right. So I don't have to run them in the DAW. Zero latency because of the Thunderbolt. And it's been it's awesome. It's a really amazing tool. Yeah. Um and, I, and I look forward stuff, to the day when I have zero latency Thunderbolt. I mean I've got about 12 millisecond latency with USB right now, which isn't bad. <laughs> like right. I, I'm recording this live hearing myself after the delay and it's totally fine. However, yeah. I think tomorrow will be my Thunderbolt uh, audio device delivery uh, day. It might be today. Awesome. So we'll we have, we'll have more stuff to talk about too. Right. Oh, you have stuff in FedEx Purgatory as well. I do. It it is. I yes, I have stuff in FedEx, especially FedEx Ground. Man, like it. Has I don't been, understand. Everything I've ordered from Amazon has been exactly as they've 
promise. But does Amazon exactly. deliver with their own trucks in your area? Do you have Amazon Prime combination? Trucks? Okay, combination. Okay, yeah, because Amazon's been great. They've been ahead of schedule for me. But yeah. and, and UPS and for me, UPS and USPS have both been like predictably fine. FedEx has been a, a mess, except I saw last, last week was the worst. The thing got within, I don't know, I'll say 30 miles of me. And it should have been put on the truck that day to be delivered to my house. And that's what FedEx said. And then and I know I'm telling a story here that Mr. Paul Kent is definitely going to be able to trump. Uh. Uh, but it then went from here down to Connecticut. So about 300 miles away. Then it drove past me the next day all the way up to uh, Maine in Biddeford, which is about 40 miles from me. And then the following day from Biddeford, they drove it to my house. But I, what I think that means is they've rejiggered at least here the way their their deliveries work, like which depots serve which towns. And maybe now we're on track. I'll I'll know by the time we finish this episode if uh, if FedEx is back on track around here. I'm, I'm not counting on it. I'm just saying I'm I'm like I said, I, I'm I'm. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I'm not getting entrenched. Uh, I'm I'm allowing them to make some mistakes and uh, and course correct, which is fine. So yeah, so you know, you of the two of us, you are generally the nicer of the two guys. And so my tale of woe with FedEx starts about those warm audio mics right? that I'm dying to use. Right? So they were supposed to have been delivered on a Friday three weeks ago. So three weeks ago from last Friday. So we're over three weeks now. Uh, you know, you get the updates and you sign up for the notifications because they I needed to be here to sign for them. Not that I'm going anywhere, but it needs to be here to sign for them. So anyway, th so for the signing, just as an aside, as long as like when my warm audio stuff arrived, which was also late, by the way, uh, because of FedEx, the uh, like everything else that I've gotten FedEx so far, uh, the guy just was like, it says I'm supposed to sign for this. I was, you know, across the driveway at my house and he's like, do you really need to like sign? I'm like, no, he's like, good. I'm good. And he left. And, you know, it was just like, as long as I can see you, I'm good. I'm like, great. But okay. that is, your presence was still required. I think I, I don't it what it made his job of w deciding whether or not he was going to just leave it easier. But I think he was leaning towards ah, this neighborhood seems all right. I'm just going to yeah. leave it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I, they, they, I don't want to, I don't want to point any fingers or get any delivery people in trouble, but no one makes me sign for anything here in our neighborhood. So, all right. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. So it was supposed to be three weeks ago last Friday <laughs> on the truck for delivery five o'clock. I get a note saying it's been rescheduled to Monday and that started two weeks of every day it was on the truck for delivery and at five o'clock of that day it gets rescheduled to the next day for two weeks what and one day it was supposed to be delivered and um and the message comes up at five o'clock that it wasn't delivered because of of weather problems it's been nothing but sunny here for <laughs> a long time you live in anyway, california man like, yeah. yeah 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 so so uh I actually flagged down a FedEx guy on Saturday and said, Hey, you know, oh, oh, and actually I put in a claim with FedEx. Uh, I called in, talked to someone who escalated it to a claims investigator who called me back and said, I'm your investigator. I'm going to be looking into this. Um, but I need you to call the distribution center and talk to them directly. He gave me a phone number that I called at least 30 times, never picked up. And he never called me back as well. So, nice. so, so that part of FedEx is broken as well. And then, you know, every day goes by. And then uh, there was a FedEx driver in the in the neighborhood here. And I actually talked to him and I said, hey, can you check on this package? And he goes, yeah. And he said he'd go back to the distribution center. And you know, I haven't heard from him either. So <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's this just is, frustrating. This and again, is what I quarantine can, has done to us, right? Gig gab has is, now it, turned into the FedEx uh, rant gab. So there you go. I think the most heinous of all this is that the guy who's paid to look into this stuff hasn't called me back, you know, yeah. at all. That, now that becomes a, a customer service Definitely. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, I can, there are I can many, excuse quite a bit. There are many customer service opportunities throughout this whole quarantine thing. Right. I mean, the, the, the restaurants that have figured out how to do their takeout right or their curbside pickup right versus the ones that have not, you, you know, like there's all kinds of customer service opportunities. And any one of them is one where you can take an upset customer and turn them into a loyal customer. Uh, and and the people that capitalize on those are the ones that are doing well. And FedEx. Yeah, get some new customers for life. Yeah, for life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. But 
Uh, right. Not everybody so gets that. So I, I, I want to talk about video. I, I did want to finish the, the tease that I left out here that we have uh, Dave Cook coming on the show next week. Dave is from Area 52 Studios in upstate New York. He runs a recording studio, but he's been helping a lot of people get their sound uh, and their setups right for their live streaming. So I thought, you know, we really have him f- help focus on that. But he's also got some great stories because I'll just list a few names and I'll list a few more next week that he's worked with, either doing live sound or recording or both. Graham Parker, Martin Medeski and Wood, uh, Elvis Costello, Todd Rundgren, wow. Julianne Hatfield, the Smithereens. Okay, yeah, I'm done. I, like I could keep going down the list and hit the King Crimson and, and 10,000 Maniacs and more. But What was the connection that that you got in touch with him? Ah, he is a listener of our Mac Geek Gab podcast. He, he actually now is a listener of Gig Gab. He did not... Uh, he didn't realize how much of the show he would like until I invited him on, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, wait a minute. I thought this was just for musicians. I'm like, well, it kind of is. He's like, no, no, it's for sound guys too. I'm like, well, okay, uh, great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So love it. Looking forward to having right, that. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, video. video, because as important as our sound is, if you are giving people something to something to watch, arguably that's even more important. Or at least equally as important. So we have this mantra on the show, always be performing, because we encourage musicians to remember that if you are on a stage, somebody is looking at you. And our my position that you have amplified is that live music is a visual art as much as it is an audio art. This is n- even more true when taking part in the streaming revolution that's going on now. Yeah. So, I know I've learned a lot. You know, I started out trying to figure out how to get as good sound as I can. That's actually pretty easy. You know, these sound devices yep. that you can plug right into your phone and you, you, know, you can hit one button and start streaming on YouTube or Instagram. Or, and you've actually got quite good quality sound, even though it gets compressed along the way. And yeah, it's, in, not bad. it's not what you said. It's actually, it's not room mic you know, ambient noise mixed in. It's actually pretty good. And, you, you know, you layer some effect on it and you can get it sounding the way you want. You can solve that. But the visual part of it is actually more involved. And for people who are not in that world, there's a lot to learn. I mean, there's a lot to learn about 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 formats and frame rates. There's a lot to learn about just the, you know, the more analogy problem solving lighting. I asked a friend of mine lighting. Who's, a, yeah. who's a great photographer, and I said, hey, you know, I'd like to up my game for streaming and, you know, get, you know, a better visual. Um, I, I'm thinking about buying a DLSR, uh, you know, a, yeah. a, a camera. Yeah. And um, he said, before you spend money on that, you know, your iPhone is pretty darn good, um, you know, camera. Light yourself right and see if you like that better. And you kind of blew my mind that that was the answer because it's a, and that's a way cheaper uh, solution in many ways than than it getting can a, a be camera. Yeah, it, it, right. So I, I will I will say this before we dive into lighting. It, for, well, I'll say it before we dive into even even cameras. We are I am a total amateur here. I mean, I I know what I know novice. because novice neophyte. <laughs> yeah, I I know what I know because I've learned it along the way. Uh, and I'm not terrible, but, but like, I don't, I didn't go to school for any of this. I haven't even really apprenticed anybody for this. Like I, like with sound, I, I didn't go to school for it, but I apprenticed a lot of different sound guys, you know, whether they knew it or not at the time. Uh, some of them did, some of them didn't, <laughs> but, uh, but with, with this, this is just dumb luck and finding things and making mistakes and paying our tuition that way. So, uh, but I will say this with, with the camera, Get make sure you get yourself a camera that is capable of at least 30 frames a second. Most laptop cameras can only do 15 frames a second. There are some window Mac laptops, definitely only 15 uh, windows. You can see the difference. Windows really- laptops. Yeah, some of them will do 30 and that's great. Uh, but but that I would say is important in terms of your camera is use something that can do 30 because, yeah, like you said, it it you can the human eye can see 15 frames is the difference between 15 and 30. Well, technically the 15 and 24, I think is where the human eye starts to top out, but, but definitely the difference, you know, between 15 and something higher than 15 for sure. Yeah. 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 All right. So let, we should start here by saying we're both admitted n- novices in this, Yeah. but there's some people out there and there's some people who've shared some really cool things. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Clay Bell's 
um, uh, his his recorded stuff looks beautiful. Um, there was a guy that we someone just shared on our, our site, um, a guy who did a notification, uh, uh, kind of a tutorial about his setup. Do you remember that? Yeah, was that Ken Hutchinson? Ken yeah. Hutchinson, I think it was. Yeah, yeah it might have been. But but it's at if you go to giggabpodcast dot slash Facebook, that'll bring you there, and you can you can it's in the group on our our Facebook group. So yeah, I yeah. just shared uh, on our Facebook thing a um, kind of a, a a camera person's perspective on the stuff, and it actually is fairly technical. Um, w- there's so much to learn, and looking good is important. And I I am very keenly aware. That uh, on mine, I, I did one just using my um, on my stream. I used my MacBook Air camera, which you said is 15 frames per second. Yeah, you can see, you can definitely see how how not crisp it is. The phone is better. I like some of the depth things that you can do with other types of cameras. I don't know if you can do those, uh, Richard, my friend who advised me to go look into lighting more. I don't know if you can adjust GoPros. He said like, you know, if you want 4k and you want, you know, additional cameras, look into those. You've talked about just using a good Logitech um, webcam, yeah. right? The C9, C930. So there's a lot of devices at a lot of price points that can get you 4k. And let me just ask you. The, the C930 is, is 1080p. The Brio is 4k. Just, just so you don't mislead somebody. Ask your question but again. Sorry, I missed you. It is 4k is 4k, whether it's a, a $200 webcam or whether it's a $2,000, you know, expensive camera, right? 4k is 4k. Yeah, yes. In that the data stream that the the camera is outputting to the computer is a 4K stream. However, the better the lens, uh, the 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 sharper that 4K image might be, and then you know the better the 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 DSP and the camera to convert it from exactly right. You know, I mean, there's a lot more to it than just yes, it's 4K, but but yes, it's 4K. Yeah, so you know the things that nice cameras can do, and and basically all modern nice cameras have video out capabilities. I guess a couple of years, Canon, you know, was the first to put yeah. this on a on a five D uh, model camera, and it kind of started a revolution in the industry. That that nice cameras now all have ways, whether it's HDMI or USB, to get video streaming out of the camera. Yep, and nice cameras offer visual acuity you know like i said depth of field and things that you're not going to get color yeah you know color sensitivity a lot of things that you know add a really professional look to it that you don't have to have you know twenty thousand dollar broadcast cameras to achieve so there's a lot of um a lot and i'm interested in that you know I, i always want it to look better but you know remember if it do you want it to look better if it's you in your underwear in the kitchen yeah right you know so there's a lot of there's a checklist of choices that you go down when producing these kind of visual events. Um, so I I'm interested in video. So I just do want to put it out to our listeners. Share your knowledge. This is a really useful thing. the The audio knowledge is rampant amongst our listeners, but I wonder how great. rampant. Yeah. 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 yeah, I wonder how rampant the video is. And so, what cameras are you use, using? Are you happy with uh, you know the video on your on your mobile device? Are you using a you know a, a super webcam? Are you are you have you gone to high end cameras, high end video cameras, high end uh, um, still cameras? So it I'm really interested to hear what other people are doing and how they're getting it and the price points that they're doing it. You know, if I have a hundred dollars to spend, I I would really like a nice camera, but I would really 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 like you know another cool microphone, right? So you know how we're how we're doling out the money to solve these problems is getting to be kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, I and and feedback at giggabpodcast.com is where we want to hear from you, please. Uh as yeah. far as lighting, I, you know, lighting is, is I think one of the things that's super easy to overlook and and certainly I overlooked it initially and and then found it, you know, just by spending a, a little bit of money, you know, less than 50 bucks usually. The first thing I recommend is get something that will light the front of you. And not be whatever, if you're using your laptop, you know, you don't want it to be your laptop lighting the front of you. That's a really bad color of light on most humans. So you want to get a light that that preferably has an adjustable white point so that you can go from being, you know, very white to very yellow and find the warmth that works for you and your environment. But you definitely want something that's going to light the front of you. And and I'll put a couple things in the show notes. I have a panel, a Luminox panel here in the studio that I use. Uh, I did just get a panel from a company called, or it, maybe the name of it is Ustream, 
you dash stream. It's not you stream TV the you know, that's separate, but, um, right. but get a panel and, and light yourself pretty brightly and then go into your camera's settings or the settings of whatever it is you're using to manage your camera, which might be, you know, uh, a, like a thing like Mimo Live or, or um, uh, what's the other one that everybody uses? OBS, right? Uh, you know, something or, or the interim step, whatever it is that's, you know, managing your camera. A lot of webcams have a utility. And in there, turn down the the exposure the brightness of the camera and adjust the contrast and the sharpness because you want to give it as much data as you can but you don't want the camera to be blown out and you can fix that by bringing the brightness down so you light yourself really nicely then bring it down so that it's and honestly my for me i find and and i and this is fairly true of most people we all think we should look brighter on the screen than than we would like to see if we were watching. So you probably are going to turn that brightness down uh, on the camera, on the input to the camera uh, further than you, you might think, Uh, because you want to give it, you you don't just want things to be blown out. You don't, you don't want things to just be so bright that, that there's no contrast. You want kind of that, that nice warm tones and, and play with it. I mean, that's like anything, right? Like, you, you know, when you're tuning up your instrument, whatever it is, you know, you, 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 you get it and then you, you hit it, you do whatever you do. You pluck the string, you whack the drum, you do whatever. And then you listen back and you're like, Oh, I like the way that worked. Oh, I didn't like that. And then you tweak. Well, do the same with the video, but, but lighting light the front of you. Now, then from there, you know, now go grab your, you know, all your Chauvet lighting that you got that's sitting in your garage and put that up behind you so that you've got some nice, you know, colors to add to the environment and and make it a little more interesting to look at uh, that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but like yeah, the front I would of agree. you. Yeah. Well, lighting, lighting is a thing. It's art. And so oh, yeah. you know, R- Richard was telling me that I need to learn about three point lighting and, you know, d- yeah. that there are approaches to lighting that are um, there. There's, there's a thing to learn there. And so, you, you know, that's, I, I bought one little uh, like a cube light. Okay. Um, I bought, it was like, you know, 40 bucks or something like that. It was sure. really expensive. It's really bright and really powerful and it works, but it casts a pretty good shadow behind me. And so I asked Richard why, you know, what do I do about that? And he goes, oh, that's what three-point lighting is about. So um, uh, there's something to learn. I need learn to learn this. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are strategies, you know, for lighting, you know, depending upon the moods you want to set. And so again, uh, you know, as much as you guys out there might be, Musicians, if you are also videographers and you understand lighting, share your knowledge because it'll be helpful to getting everybody to get you know higher quality streams going. So lighting is a thing, and and lights can be like I said, I have a sixty dollar light that's definitely got half my face lit pretty well. Yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, and I could buy two more of those and you know figure out where to put them. Lights, are, you know, that's the thing. So yep. I just uh, I just want to encourage everybody share your knowledge and you know let's get to a place where everybody's looking a little bit better on screen. Yeah, yeah, and it won't hurt. I mean, you know, if and also think about it because maybe some of the lights you buy, you know, yes, you could spend like we're talking about here, you know, less than fifty bucks to get something that in your little home environment is the right thing. But also think about well you know, is it worth spending more and then having a thing that you take with you to when you play your next gig and, right. and right. You know, th- there, there are paths that can be carved here. So yeah, I yeah, agree. it's good. All right, man. That's what I got today. What do you got? Anything else? No, that, that was kind of fun. You yeah. know, we're just sitting here. Time is going by. I'm thinking about gigging. I know my band is in a different place. Different guys in the band are in different places. I'm seeing other people do it. I'm feeling that that gravity trying to pull me yeah. towards figuring out how to make it happen. But I know it's not quite time yet. At least here, it's not quite time. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I, I think today, you know, in addition to always be performing, I, I, I appreciate what you said, Dave, that be cool to everybody who's trying to figure it out. But, you know, I just hope people can be cool and compassionate to other people, right? Well, that's it. That Yeah. If your Compassion whole perspective is, is yep. yeah, if your whole perspective is, I'm going to do what's right for me. Screw everybody else. That's just, 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 that's just a tough world to live in if, if that's how we feel. And so, but we need to, we need to to extend our compassion to that person too. If, if we're not that person, we need to, you know, it's just as important to try and understand like, okay, what do you, 
you know, what are you doing? Why? Why? <laughs> you know, and actually listen. And, and because at some point we're all going to get to that point where it's like, OK, I've hit whatever data I've I needed to see that makes me feel comfortable going out and doing a thing that I was not previously doing. Like we're all going to get there at some point. And some of us will get there a whole lot sooner than others. And some folks are, are already there. And yep. Yep. So, Hey, one last thing for yeah, my request today, my bandmate, Simon, it's his birthday today. So first happy birthday, Simon. Second, could all you listeners, when we post this, can you leave a birthday wish for Simon? It'll make his day. It'll make him really happy. So <laughs> happy birthday, be really Simon. Cool. That's good. Happy birthday, Simon. The, the last gig I played with, or the, the last full gig I played with Simon, I should say was exact, almost exactly a year ago. It was a year ago, like, like this past weekend. So he came. Yeah, I had no nature. idea that that was happening. And then I, when I saw the picture of you people, my, my world was blown. So, <laughs> you know, that I, 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 you know, you knew him from coming and sitting in with the house rockers, yeah, right? Yeah. And then he was going to visit family in, in near your area and some gig came about and he called, what he just called you and asked you. Yeah, he texted you know. me and he's like, Hey, you want to play a gig with me? And I'm like, sure. He's like, can you bring a sound system? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Way easier for me it. to bring from an hour away than him from, you know, a five hour flight away. So yeah. <laughs> and that woman that was his singing partner, she's awesome. Amy Durkee, man. Yeah. She, and I hadn't, I had never met her until we got to the gig. I'd never Does heard she live her. far from you. Uh, she lives down in mass, I think. So, you know, with about an hour ish. Uh, Got it. But, you know, that was one of those. I, I have had so many moments like this on stage. I, I love these kinds of pickup gigs where you just sort of throw your trust into it. And, and and you appreciate that people having thrown their trust at you, you know, so you you show up and you try to deliver the, your best performance. But you also have to have big ears because you have no idea, like, how you're going to blend. Like, the point for that gig was three people were going to be singing together most of the day. Well, that's mm -hmm. weird because none of the – well – I had never sang with them and they'd sung with each other, which I knew, uh, but they'd never sung with me. So I was like, all right, well, now that I know that I'm going to listen how they work together and I'll find my way in the mix. And, and then of course, playing along with them too. And Amy opened her mouth to sing. It was like, holy crap. That's the kind sing. of, that's the kind of voice she has. Oh, this is all totally different. I like, this is going to be <laughs> great. Like, I mean, it was, I was expecting it to be great, but it was like, this is going to be a different version of great than I thought it was. She has this really soulful, like, yeah. man, oh, effortless. Yeah. But she can like really lay it down. She and Simon, it was a pleasure playing along with it. They, um, uh, oh, what's, what's the sting tune? Uh, we'll be together. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, th that sting tune that he did on is nothing like the sun record, I think. And, uh, they did this great version of it, which was this weird, like more rhythmic type of thing. It was almost like a Dave Matthews talking heads kind of, kind of deal. And she sang it. It was like, it was so like gritty and soulful and driving. It was like, oh yeah, this gig is going to be a blast. I think it was like the That's second cool. song of the day or something. <laughs> it was perfect. All right. So happy birthday, Simon. And listeners, please leave a message that just says happy birthday, Simon, if you can. That would, he'd get a big kick out of it. Yeah, Thanks yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, Paul, for, uh, for you know, ranting about uh, FedEx today because we needed a good rant. <laughs> we, had to, we, had to, we had to shake our fists in anger about something. So we... <laughs> May my microphones make it out of FedEx purgatory sometimes. There you go. <laughs> Always be performing, folks. Well lit. <laughs>